Hi, and welcome to a another episode where I work with broken stuff. Please ignore that for the time being. It has its own story to tell. Unfortunately, it's not the today's episode. Today's episode is a 300 quid worth pile of plastic that's been juiced pile of plastic. So as you can see, um, this is what we currently have. The machine is, oh, I want to say maybe a half, half a year old, six months more or less. It has been through um, maybe two or three refills now. Um, I can't get into the the whole thing inside to see how many pages it has printed, but this is the current situation. The scanner error and error could well scan in. Interesting. Turn off the machine. Oh, sorry. Turn the power off and on again. Wow. Um, if the problem persists, contact Epson support. And there's a digit at the bottom, as you can see. There's 031006. So let us try to fix this. I'm clueless on what this is. I mean, there's the scanner, and I'm not sure why it's giving out the error, but. Let's see what Google says. This says, well, it has lots of different things and stuff. It suggests changing cartridges um, on an echo tank. Yeah. Um, another post suggests that there is a printhead fault or issue. And as you know, I have had this printed out of the uh, printer, so I guess uh, it isn't clear what has happened because clearly the whole the whole thing was working for some time for quite some time in fact and it's currently not so although I don't have an answer to what this problem is specifically I have no idea what to do with it and there's seemingly no options but one I still can take it apart and just have a look maybe I will see that a random cable has broken loose Maybe I will find nothing, but that is at least one thing that I'm able to do. And we basically will go from there.
as you could have noticed from the previous uh, clip that a um, I wouldn't call it a damage I'd say something has been discovered that shouldn't be there for quite obvious reasons uh, which is the um, the uh, cable that connects the pinhead uh, and uh, the pins are in, in, in something, regardless of what it is, or what's the technical term for it. Um, now, what to do with it? You can get professional cleaning solution and um, lint-free cleaners and stuff, uh, but you could also use your Q-tips or cotton buds, I think they're called. Um, but basically, if you're just at home, and, and you can use your um, toilet paper, works just fine. When you also happen to have some IPA, like 99.9% .9 IPA, I mean, so, I mean, sorry, no tap water for electrical contacts. Um, right, so while we can imagine this being the main problem and the um, this is what caused all of this and this is going to be now um, fixed it's, it, it isn't necessarily the case straight away because there could be further damage which I shall demonstrate <laughs> and <laughs> there goes the non lint free uh, but yes so basically the contacts are corroded and will require the easy way out is to replace the sh the, the not shelf what you would call them uh, the the whole cable basically but you could try and solder it of course if you have a soldering iron and soldering station that would be handy uh, um, for <laughs> soldering stuff but unfortunately as much as I would not like to disassemble the print head I might not have a choice because I'm unable to otherwise clean the contacts we'll see how it goes with the cable because now I've got a fancy thing they can show you way closer than you could actually see that's a microscope and let's see how it actually looks Let's see if I can get this image in there at all. Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't work at all. Right, so, plan B. Basically, what's happening is there are a few corroded lines that I've just said will require soldering, but under a closer look under the microscope, it actually looks they could be just oxidized layers of stuff and the black stuff isn't actually uh, anything too bad so let me clean these up and we'll see how it goes then in theory the best the best thing to do currently is to uh, replace the cable a couple of pads are lifting which means when I try to plug it back into the print head they might fold onto themselves which is not ideal but ah, whatever right so everybody who's for putting this back together and seeing if it works then it works say i well i so uh, um it's decided then we'll put in this back together uh, anyway so i'll put Put this back together, maybe, hopefully. We'll see if this works, and uh, if it does, then we'll just leave it at that. Leave it till it uh, corrodes, maybe, possibly. I mean, the good way of doing this would be obviously replacing the cable, but then again, you could just say, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, tin, tin the cables in the pads not the cables oh gosh english right i'll i'll try to figure out how this works maybe help now i'll just jam it back up together everything and, and, and 
and yeah, I'll get back to you. The pin hands in. Eh, whatever. Uh, let's put these things back in. No, wait. There was this piece of something, and I presume this is where the things will go against. Maybe, possibly. So let's put this one in. Maybe we put this in even the right way in. Well, then there is a, a small, small um, mishap that happened during the disassembly where I pretty much just broke this off because, yeah, whatever. Because, um, yeah. Um, right. It even has a screw held. So one screw will have one less place to go to. Um, oh well. I mean, is it really necessary now? Will this not be held in place regardless? Let's find out, I guess. So, this looks like this goes in first. Uh, yeah, you kind of... You kind of want to have this here. Mmm. Right, that makes it up for a bit of a nuisance. Right, let me think of something. I'll get back to you. As we have already discovered, that piece of plastic needs needs to be um, needs to be fixed because it obviously holds the uh, them things in and them things in and whatever. So, yeah. one thing is, how do you <laughs> fix plastic? Obviously, you fix plastic by melting it. Hey, soldering iron. Well, it's warm enough. I'll tell you. Mm. That, that's the piece of plastic. I'll tell you how it is I'm going to do so. Well, back in the days when I will, when I was still fixing stuff, we used a bunch of material to and ways to fix plastics. You can obviously simply having um, having a plastic, having a soldering iron. What you can do is you can melt the plastic, and it will form well something like you could melt it here, melt it here. But obviously that's not strong enough. So what has been done? I'm not sure what the current technology is. You basically take your ring, your key ring, you unwind it, you cut it into bits and pieces, uh, like that, and you melt this into the section where two pieces meet together. This will stop it from popping out, just pressing against the other end. So I've, I've drawn with a sharpie over the pieces that need a plastic, sorry, the metal string molten into it. So, let's see if I can get this done in a way that you are able to see that as well. The idea behind all of this is as simple as that. Simple, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I had to the wrong bit, wrong, wrong, wrong end, the, the, the uh, which we call it, the hot iron end, a tip, some wrong soldering tip, there we go. So yeah, you melt it into a plastic, and then you obviously cover the whole thing. So it's not visible any more or any less. There we go, just like that. Looks messy, does the job. Uh, well, at least I hope it will. So, another joint somewhere, let's say here. It takes a little while to warm up to the working temperature when the rod, metal rod starts to sink in the plastic and 
melted so I, its own uh, placement position, so to say, into the, um, the shape of plastic. I have welded together. If I can have a look, look at the proper way it's shown it. Right, so basically, that's one, that's two here, three here, four here. There could be one more on top, but we'll see if that's really necessary. And this should now be removed. These are in place. This the latch has snuck in, and it is held together, and none of them are popping out so presumably they are at the right height and this hopefully will be sturdy enough i mean it should be there is no reason for it not to be because it has reinforcement now so let me put this all back together and see if it actually what well, actually i could just plug this in yeah okay let me plug this in and see what it does i've dismantled the, the whole thing to the um, to the bits and bobs and whatnot. So basically, that's the main board right there. I can't see anything wrong with it. But I was looking at these things. Oh, sorry. Uh, I turned on the printer. It still had the very same issue. It still said something, something scanner, blah blah blah. But whatever. Um, so basically, I, I decided to have a look, see the connections and everything. If anything is obviously wrong with the thing, well. Um, and I was looking at these cables, the ribbon cables, and I remembered something. I'll show you in a minute. There we go. So basically that thing right there, and I thought, it looks like something could be plugged into it. But then I looked on the other side, and you can, you can clearly see that it plugs in there. So that's fine. Another cable goes there, if I'm unable. To evaluate because it basically plugs in somewhere there uh, I hope something's understandable from that but yeah basically now I have to see what, what the connections are like and there's, o there's only that many cables that are coming from the scanner but let's see if anything for it. it still could be the print hand for all I know but yeah we'll see what comes out of it let me plug in and out a couple more cables. Bad news then. My best guess is that while this, the brain head, had a um, something, well obviously corrosion and stuff going in inside, uh, what it did is it connected with a uh, nearby wire and it shorted something on the main board. Therefore, the state of the brain head is unknown and the state of the board is unknown and I'm really not willing to spend my time without the schematics going through this and just poking around to see if I can find the chip that's faulty or the element that's faulty, the IC or whatever it might be and then after that going and finding the replacement component and placing that in. So I presume, uh, I not presume, I pronounce this uh, dead unfortunately 300 quid uh gun down the drain so hopefully you've learned something um because i didn't <laughs> but um yeah that's pretty much it for this episode and stay tuned for more me breaking stuff <laughs>